Hello, I'm Dr Jo and in this Global Science Share I'm going to be doing some science from home and today we're going to be thinking about wood lice and their habitats. Now wood lice are tiny little uh, invertebrates and in fact uh, they like to live in dark damp places so I'm going to take you on a little journey into a bit of the end of my garden that we leave for um, lots of things to live in. So it's a sort of an unkept area. There's lots of stones and rocks around and bits of wood um, for lots of uh, mini beasts to live in. And normally, under these bricks here, there's all sorts of invertebrate life, so millipedes and snails and worms and slugs and wood lice. Now today, there aren't that many there. And I wonder if it's because we've been having lots of dry weather. So you can see there's a worm just in there, some beetles scurrying about. Let's have a look under some other bricks and see if we can find some more. Now wood lice populations are sometimes prone to fluctuations in their numbers. We can have a look here. Ah, here we've got some wood lice scurrying about. So there's a pill wood louse there and then a different type of wood louse, one of the armadillidae um, is the pill wood louse and then this sort of flatter one um, at the end here. So I've collected some wood lice and we saw two different types of wood lice there. So I said, I mentioned the one on the left hand side here is the pill wood lice um, and it's part of the armadillidae group of wood lice and they're really very common in the UK. And then we've got the flatter one on the right hand side. And they're a different type and they are called the common shiny wood louse, the Aniscus ethylus. And they're also quite common where I live in the UK. There are about 45 species of wood louse that live here and only about five of them are common, but these are the, the ones that you're most likely to find. My favourites are the pill wood louse, the sort of the more rounded ones that can curl up completely into a ball. Now, Different types of wood lice can curl up into a ball or only partially curl up and actually some of them can't curl up at all. Now wood lice are not insects and they're not arachnids, they're actually crustaceans. So a bit like lobsters and crabs and originally they were marine invertebrates, so they lived in the sea. But now there's a whole variety of terrestrial wood louse that live on the land and also aquatic ones that live uh, in the water. And depending on the type, the species of wood louse, they like to live in places that are more or less damp. So let's have a look um, at something more to do with wood lice. So we can have a look here. I've got my Lice Move website up to have a look for great locations for them to live. We've got some rotting wood, um, there's a desert, there's a coral reef, and some ice in the Arctic. So have a think where do you think wood lice would like to live? So I mentioned before that they like to live in damp, dark places like rotting wood piles. So I think that these wood lice would be looking uh, to move to a place that, that was a very much like this. So I collected some wood lice. So there's a couple of pill wood lice in here and one of the flatter types that we saw earlier as well, the Uniscus ones. Um, and you can see them scurrying about here. Now, an interesting fact about wood lice is that they have something called turn alternation. So if they're stopped from turning away that they want to go, um, the next time they have the opportunity to do that, they will turn in that location. Now, this here is a choice chamber and these two bits at the bottom are damp and these two bits at the top are dry. And you can see that they alternate black and white. So a dark area and a light area. So we're going to use the choice chamber to see what sort of environment these wood lice would prefer to live in. So a choice chamber is often used in behavioural studies with animals to see uh, what sort of things they might choose, they might prefer. So you could look at choices of food or you could look at um, habitats and environment. Now, um, we've got three wood lice in here. So in a choice chamber, what you can do is you can either do continuous sampling of, of your um, invertebrates and continually monitor whether they're in the damp side or whether they're in the dry side, are they in the dark side or are they in the light side? Or you can do discrete sampling. I'm just gonna flip this one uh, over gently to write in the right way. So you can just take a sample maybe every 30 seconds, every minute and record 
where the wood lice are in that area. So are they in light? Are they in dark? Are they in the damp side? Are they in the dry side? And then that gives us a little clue as to where they are. Now one of them has just snuck in at the top and gone underneath my piece of paper, which has sort of um, scuppered my experiment a little bit there because it's already it's gone for somewhere dark, very dark underneath to hide. So as I mentioned, you can either monitor this continuously and see where they've gone. So we've got one currently on the damp and um, light side and one on the dry but dark side. At the moment, they're maybe just exploring their environment and working out that the edge of this box, they can't turn as well. Another one's just poked itself underneath, uh, hiding out of the way of the sun. It's quite a bright, sunny day here. So it's just moving around. And we can see a bit of that turn alteration going on there, alternation going on there as well, where it's forced to stop turning the way it wants to turn uh, because of the box being there. So we'll see then that it goes on and it will, will turn further on. So let's have a look a little bit more closely at this choice chamber. So here's the box here and we can see that um, on the left hand side, um, is the damp part and we've got the light and the dark and then on the right hand side is the dry part with the dark and the light. Now I've alternated them like that so that there isn't necessarily uh, a preference between being on the right side or the or the left side or the top or the bottom so that we've got that difference um, to try and, and prevent any other factors having an influence to make it um, a fair test. So uh, I use a choice chamber here to work out what sort of environment a woodlouse would like to live in. Now, we didn't see the end of the video there, but apart from some of them spending some time tucked underneath the, the, the dark bit, we found that the woodlouse spend most of their time on the dark side and on the damp side. So that kind of makes us think that yes, that's absolutely true. The woodlouse would rather live in a damp, dark environment and they're um, evolved to to live in in places like that so they actually absorb water through their through the cuticle on their body and from the food they eat they don't drink water um, and they breathe not through lungs like we do but from actually sort of a modified trachea type lungs on their hind legs um, and so they are much better at getting oxygen out of the air um, in a damp environment Here's my woodlouse there popping onto the, onto the choice chamber. If you'd like to find out, out lots of more different things in science, then you can follow me at Dr. Joe Science on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook and see if you can do lots of science from home with me. Bye.